Okay, so welcome everybody to another Code Support webinar. Uh, we have with us uh, Ashu Khanna today, and she is going to be talking on dealing with uncertainties. Uh, may I call upon uh, Ujwal to give an introduction of Ashu? Uh, thanks, Pradeep. Uh, good evening, Ashu, and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Ashu Khanna, I think most of you know her, so I'm not going to talk about Ashu as a coach, Ashu as a business leader, but I am going to introduce Ashu as a person, okay, because I think she would also like to be introduced that way, because otherwise rest of the details are definitely available on professional networks. Am I right, Ashu? Absolutely. Thanks for that, Ujjal. Okay. And so, thank you. Uh, lovely to be here, everybody. Okay, so so Ashu, her uh, so I would uh, just like to cite one experience that I had. Uh, she has uh, actually single-handedly, uh, you know, worked towards uh, establishing ICF Mumbai chapter, and also uh, contributed to its growth like anything. And uh, while that, uh, we, both of us had an opportunity to jointly work on uh, one of the workshops for coaches development in ICF Mumbai chapter. That's why I got connected with her personally for the first time. And uh, four qualities that really stood out for me. And one, of course, uh, it's, it's top of everything. So what I found out about Ashu, so if I may use the word, her name as an acronym. So oh, okay. A, Ashu's A stands for authentic. I found her to be extremely authentic. Then S and H stands for her... Uh, she operates straight from the heart. So S and H, operating straight from the heart. So you will find S stands for straightforwardness and H stands for her heartful approach to anything that she does. She does everything very passionately. And I think that's why she has reached where she has to reach. And still the journey is uh, underway. And U stands for that you will notice uh, very soon, those of you who haven't heard her or um, not a part of her earlier sessions, would really identify that U stands for upbeat. You will find her upbeat, you will find her upright. So U has many connotation except uncertainties that she would, uh, she would navigate us through today. So it's an absolute pleasure to have her on this forum. And I think you, all of you, including myself, we have some tremendous takeaway. And also I would like to warn you in advance that uh, do not expect the one one way communication like a speech from her. She is going to keep it very conversational. So be ready to feel her questions and also respond. So I think the best gift that we can give it to her for her valuable time today is to be responsive and participative to her session. So thank you for your time in uh, listening to my introduction. And Ashu, over to you. Okay, this is possibly the most amazing start I've had. So thank you so much for that. You've, uh, okay, you've struck straight at my heart. So thank you for that. Most welcome. Um, and I would really like to start with, you know, there's something I truly believe in. And when I, we talk of uncertainties, how to succeed in uncertainties, there is a very fundamental place I start, I sit in in life is we are born winners. That's the place I sit in. We are born winners. Now, when you sit in a place which says we are born winners, there is nothing that I can do will, will make me lose. So therefore, there is the whole concept of uncertainty effectively goes out of my head. And I'll tell you where that starts from, really. Uh, uncertainty is an interpretation. It is not a reality. Uh, the life is dynamic. It is meant to be dynamic. Uh, life force is energy and there is no way energy cannot be dynamic. So when life is dynamic and meant to be dynamic, it's really about partnering with that dynamism. If you learn how to partner with that dynamism, 
you will it's like riding the waves of an ocean if you learn to be that wind you know the wind surfer or a sailor or you know you you make friendship with the waves it is more a joyful journey and rather than a journey of uncertainty the uncertainty is a friend and that's really the place i start with so you are going to succeed there at each and every wave because it will take you forward somewhere it will take you somewhere in that ocean of life question is are you willing to travel with that wave or are you going to question each wave and get stuck and that's when the drowning happens so when we look at therefore how you know how to succeed in uncertainties it's a mind game it's nothing but a mind game what is success mean to me so i'm going to stop here and ask a few people what is their definition of success and anybody can go it's more a learning from each and every opportunity or each and every action that you perform thank you vani so if each action is a learning opportunity uh then how can i lose because whether i fall or i stand upright either which way i learn some more perspectives let's add to this conversation well i guess um she says to me is what i set out to do in my mind uh, or what i feel i want to do and is for, and and be doing that in other words fulfilling my purpose that's that's my success um and, and so it's once i know my purpose which i do I fulfill it every day and that's that becomes a successful day. Okay, so once I know my purpose, I like that John, but however is Ross, sorry. But there are many people who sometimes don't have clarity on their purpose. Then how yeah. do they feel successful? Well, I guess they use whatever they use. So some some people don't find this that you're right, they find their purpose, so their success is just small things in their life. Um may not be major. because they don't actually they don't actually um grow when when you have your purpose you grow a lot you grow into your purpose and you live your purpose ah uh, you grow into your purpose okay 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 so i didn't i mean some some people might be born with a purpose but they they grow into it um and and at different stages in your life some people are lucky they get their purpose when they're 12 others wait till they're 72 before they find their purpose <laughs> It, and it quite often comes when it when it's meant to come, and you need to be awake uh, to observe that it's come. Some people have closed minds, so they never the purpose goes past them. So it's that open mind to to understand where your purpose is, and you live that purpose every day. In that, there's a lot of minor minor little tactical goals, but success to me is just living that purpose. So it so if i had to interpret that it's letting life unfold in a lot of ways it's with your with the antennas on your your internal intuitive radar helping you yeah so it's staying at, in in tune with life and allowing it to unfold for you uh is success for you now here i have a few comments and thank you for that ross uh to be at peace with whatever happens happiness achieve an outcome that you set out being accepting of who you are that's success for you and what about accepting others for who they are how does that pan out well once you accept yourself who you are then you then you'll be in a position to accept others you won't accept <laughs> others unless you accept yourself it's never going to happen right so if you, if you If you're a bit bitter towards yourself, you you'll be bitter towards everyone. But if you success, if you accept yourself, then I'm telling you now, that's when you're in a position to accept others. You know, you won't automatically do it, but you you're well and truly on the journey. 
<laughs> yeah, so it is a journey indeed. So success is not a place that you arrive at. It's a journey. Because, you know, you climb, there are people who climb Mount Everest, they've done that, they say, oh, I have to go to now Mount Kilimanjaro, oh, I've done that, now let me go to Denali Mountain, because that's even tougher. The summit keeps changing. So success can be really a shifting target, or success can be an everyday celebration of life when one lives with gratitude. It's really a state of mind back to the, how do I look at life? What's my perspective of every facet of life? And now when, let's say uncertainty. So I'm going to share a few, um, you know, things that, so I started coaching way back 2006. Uh, I could say it was ridden with uncertainty because I didn't even know what I was doing. And uh, at that time, it appeared to be a struggle just communicating and articulating what I was trying to accomplish. I think, however, staying with that uh, helped in its own way get fall into a rhythm and keep coaching and getting clients. Then came the 2008 financial uh, crisis, the Lehman, good old Lehman days. Uh, that's when I first came to a place of not knowing, okay, what next? And I decided to spend time writing. I had so many thoughts in my head, which I, and experiences from the last the years before the two or three years, I started penning them down. So what I did was I used a low phase to reinvent myself. And next thing I knew, I had... Um, Articles getting published in TOI, in Business World, in ET, all because I use that uncertainty to my advantage of sharing my thoughts. Roll forward, uh, you know, the industry keeps changing and you keep reinventing yourself. We've come to COVID now. And here is where I would, in fact, love to share with all of you all what I've done here today is, in fact, I'll be putting an announcement out formally uh, in the next couple of days is launch a collaboration of co glo coaches globally to, with a vision to develop authentic leaders in the world. So what I've done is invested this time to really sign up and formalize the agreements start putting the website together and say, let's get ready to leapfrog from this place of strength and collaboration to once again come forward in a different expression. So each time for me, a phase which appears, call it uncertain or different or unstable is an opportunity to reinvent myself. Now I'd love, and Coach for you is a classic example of a reinvention of many people. And I really applaud uh, Viji and all of you all who have taken this leadership to say, okay, how can we serve coaches together uh, by coming, you know, taking leadership of ourselves. So I'd love to hear some stories of reinvention. Let's keep it quick and short because we have 40 people here. Uh, a couple of stories of when you had an uncertainty, how did you reinvent yourself? Who's going to go? Ashu, Vasu here. Can I go? Absolutely, Vasu. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. I won't show myself in my easy chairs. <laughs> so, um, Ashu, I, I dive into... Uh, upskilling myself when I when I have this phase. So, so last time when I when I did this, I, I learned uh, facets about consulting. That's the year two thousand eight you're talking about. Um, from a from a pre sales solution architect, I became a consulting specialist uh, in IT. This time, when there is this uh, thing happening, I am training myself on digital marketing because I realized that 
cocktails is a very important aspect of my life that I need to understand. So I reinvent by learning. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Vasu, for that. Someone else. Uh, Ashu, can I come in? Of course, Puneet. The yeah. floor is open for anybody. So, having spent about eighteen years in uh, industry, predominantly in um, you know leadership roles, uh, I I really wanted to go to the drawing board and check what do I really want to do? Do I want to remain as a commercial leader forever? or is there something deeper calling that's that's something i've been ignoring or not really living so but it was a difficult decision to you know let go of that role and then try to see what i want to do next so i think uh, what really helped me is to stay keep my mind open to possibilities with a lot of hope i uh, kind of dabbled with various things first of all um, uh, joined peter redding for my coach training on one hand uh did my hogan certification went about doing several talent assessments across all industries not limiting myself to healthcare and pharma that i came from and and then eventually uh, also started teaching so i had so basically i i could kind of find that i want to make a difference to people's lives and that could be done in various ways and before i can zero in on and say hey this is my uh, you know core area of calling let me be open to possibilities and do various things that i want to do and so they four years from there i think i've anchored in coaching um, with all my uh, heart and passion excellent thank you for that so using a, a you know a phase to discover yourself to upskill learning really inspiring stories who's going to add to this um, stories that we have here who's going to can i ls yeah ls absolutely thank you i want to go back to the uh, previous crisis we had in 2008 9 uh, that was my rpg days in uh, jensa technologies and then we thought we should utilize this time and we engaged uh, mckinsey to actually optimize the resources and how best we can actually work and one of the actually concepts they came out where is interested the senior leadership team can take dual roles instead of actually playing your actually single role take up any other like being a head of hr from one to you i accepted operation service delivery role mm. for three months actually it, it was a, a great difficulty going back to the technology and understanding <laughs> customer understanding the deliverables understand we start from the coding we don't have to do the coding but you will have to understand the complete project management and it was great learning because subsequently when i had an opportunity to become a global service delivery head this entire journey of actually reinventing myself learning a new actually completely new skill new new area that really helped me greatly in shaping my next career uh, excellent thank you so you really challenged yourself completely in a new uh, dimension absolutely <laughs> wonderful wonderful uh, some another story vicky go yeah hi this is vicky kalara here thanks for the opportunity um the two things i want to tell you one is what ashu said that uh we are all born winners i couldn't agree more in fact uh can you think of a single moment where you have been born facing disruption you were cocooned in an aquatic world for 9 months and that was the only time your mother had two hearts and everything that you got from your mother was through your umbilical cord 9 months in an aquatic world and then you were just pushed into a world and you had no option but to breathe there and with all the doctors and everyone around you no one could help you now that is how powerful we are so we learned how to breathe and this has been my guiding force in my life so the example i want to give you is what you spoke about 2008 the global meltdown and my chartered accountant asked me a question at the end of the year that all these years you have been on your own how come this is the year you have made the maximum revenues when everyone's balance sheet has been looking like a horror film and i told him this i said i had to reinvent myself i asked my client i asked myself only one question why would a client want to engage with me 
and why would you want to pay me and uh, one of my uh, verticals was leadership hiring and that was the time when the organizations put the fear of god in the minds of people that a known devil is better than an unknown god so don't leave this is not the time to leave and i told my clients you tell me the guy you want i'll get it for you so i had to go through and this could not be a recruitment narrative at all and that is where i learned transactional analysis and rebt and what not and i learned how to integrate various disciplines to create that kind of a value and trust me this is very powerful what i learned so in most of my conversations when people tell me i want to uh, be a great coach i want to be a good leader i want to make a difference to people's lives i say all right but that's what you want why would anyone want to be coached by you why would anybody want to be led by you and why would anybody want you to make a difference to their lives and i realize that the only person whom you can really make a difference to is your own self and the beauty is when these things start happening inside you it's so powerful that people come up and tell you hey what is that you did i want that something that you have which is so intangible and this i learned in 2008 and trust me during these covid times in the last two months that we are at home i have been defining new services and creating new offerings and all web based so that's briefly i think i've taken a little longer but i thought this is important that you thank you thank, thank you. you so much uh, thank you vicky and i'm going to shake up the balance a little bit and we've had three men share uh i'd like some woman to share now we had vani in the beginning but there's no other woman who's shared so i would like some diversity here in stories and request for some woman to put her hand up okay pari are you going to go uh parinita ya can you hear me parinita ya yeah yeah pari go hi ashu hi hi uh, can i go ahead yes please we are waiting for you oh, okay no i'm having some bandwidth issues for me it's been more a journey of self reflection what is this uncertainty doing doing to me internally is it shaking me up and if it's just shaking me up what can i do to prevent it from shaking me up what can i do to be a better version of myself so i can go along with this uncertainty without feeling that hustle bustle within and over time i've realized that it has actually strengthened me to come up with a better version of myself uh, what i mean by that is stronger uh, more capable to deal with a jolt or a wave that comes my way i've learned to swim better with the times if i were to wrap it up in a few words it's helped me be, become a swimmer thank you so when i pick look at here are some words and thank you for that pari there is you know when we explore when we reflect when we do self discovery we go through upskilling or we anchor ourselves all of that helps us right yes true and true certainty now there is a word that came up is anchor myself when i get more anchored i feel stronger to ride with the waves and here is where i would love to get some more perspectives anchor into what what are we anchoring into values okay in what else being into our being self we know who we are and what we are looking for not okay. just getting into that random doing mode but actually anchor with our being and then try to see okay what else some um, yes sir. who else is what is the purpose of my life actually what calls me inside that gives me joy for moving forward 
Okay, Aparna, thank you. So we are anchoring into that purpose, the sense of joy. All right. I'm loving where this is going. We are expanding more and more from uncertainty to joy. See how the conversation is just changing. Anchoring into reality. Are boss. Reality. Badiya bhari word le aaye. What is that? Aha, to bhari word ka bhi hum matlab samaj samjhate hain. Yeah. You see, matlab samjhate hain. <laughs> See, uh, I can resonate with a situation where I was posted in the Caribbean and uh, had to. Okay, I don't like you right away because that's <laughs> not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so go for it. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Ashok. <laughs> okay, so I was faced with a situation where I had to convert a loss-making unit into a profitable one. so in my journey i discovered that there was low morale amongst the employees i found that uh, there was fear and uh, realizing that my job was to convert them into you know realizing what opportunities were there a single product company with a very good brand image need to be converted and uh, through the process of seeking opportunities i was able to do that and uh, introduce a number of products in the same uh, sphere or same market so i think i i was able to to convert and became one of the most profitable units in the group in a short period of time so that's the reason why i stated uh, understanding what the reality was and uh, taking effective steps to overcome challenges excellent congratulations on that and as we accept reality what is the reality today with covid how can we really exploit opportunities here what are the kind of opportunities this phase is throwing at us any thoughts of course i know i see lots of leadership here other than that opportunity to look within and really know what you want and uh, like i call it the gps is a vps which is your values your purpose of life and strengths and also core beliefs just just look within first and then try to see how you can leverage that okay so what else so one is look within vicky i'll come back to you in a minute let me and puneet also later i'd love to hear some new voices now yeah harish yeah yes harish also i think get healthy get strong excellent look okay not out learn to coexist so abhi aap ghar pe ho you have to coexist in any way case you have no choice don't i mean the virus okay so uh who else is going to go for it i guess i'll go more as a participant i guess it's giving us a whole new opportunity to blueprint a new world in front sorry, of sorry who is that i'm sorry i pradeep yeah pradeep sorry pradeep. Ah, pradeep ah okay okay my second page of participants is very quiet and i'd love to hear from you know navita sahil i'm just throwing names out swati sumitra gauri anybody some other voices can i also Yeah, Subhu. Of I course. First, I don't know in which page I am. First or second page. <laughs> you just popped in the first page, so thank you for Subhu, that. You are on the same page. Yeah. So what what I am seeing now is that people are at their most vulnerable. Hmm. There is a certain openness. Uh, something that perhaps the mad pace of life, the frenzy of you know, daily activities, was keeping them away from. So. in that sense there is an opportunity for us to reach out and uh, sort of offer what we can uh, with our experience in this field and also you know uh, give them absolutely unconditional non judgmental uh, positive regard all that we have heard of in our coaching practices here is an opportunity actually so how can we open our hearts out fully let's be present to life absolutely thank you yes. so 
we have endurance, we have open to the heart, we have well-being and health, and uh, Ashu, uh, self-discovery. Yeah. Who's that now? Yeah, Ajit here. Yes. Ajit, Ajit. Yeah, uh, I think uh, this has also been an opportunity, you know, to revisit our relationships, maybe re-energize some of them. Somewhere we were losing perspective and we are in a way reconnecting with ourselves plus our relationships, the important people in our life. This has very, been like very, very true. Absolutely. Yeah. Really true. So, Vicky, uh, no, who's going to go next? Sorry, I'll come back to you, Vicky. I haven't forgotten you. Who else is going to shoot something now? Hi, Ashu. Can I share something about of I'm course, sorry, Swati. opportunity? Yes. Uh, so I am uh, 27 years old and my uncertainty was that uh, at 24, I was in love with a guy who had a transferable job and um, I really wanted to have a life with him and I am also very ambitious and career oriented. So my issue was that I could either have my career, stay in one place, have my career or be with him and move. So that was a challenge in my life and I made it a point to look for opportunities so, so that I can have a career while being with him mm. and uh, I tapped into something very unconventional of making videos on YouTube. It's been uh, three, three, three years that I make videos and right now I don't have just one uh, stream of income. I have five streams of income. I am with my husband. I get to travel the world. I always wanted to travel the world. and. Uh, being in my job that I was in, I would have never done this. That is outstanding. Thank you. So anybody who needs YouTube videos, you know who to go to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and for 27, that's outstanding. Thank you for being so vulnerable on this and open. Thank you. Uh, Vicky, your turn. I've kept you waiting long enough. Not at all. Um, see, for me, what's helped is acceptance that there is absolutely no safety net from the time you're born till the time you die. Uh, once you accept the uncertainty of life and what has given me the calm is connecting to my mortality, the evanescence of life and the, the transient nature of life. So I've been a great fan of Eckhart Tolle and uh, in the now, he says there is no danger. So yes, living a, a mindful life, it's not easy. I know that, you know, the thoughts race all over the place, but I tried to, you know, and you spoke about anchoring. I, I have tried anchoring myself into the present as much as I can. So these things have really helped me. And the other thing is uh, opening up to others, embracing that vulnerability and telling, yes, I'm scared. And in that conversation, miraculously, that thing which has been bothering you, it loses its potency to hurt you. So you don't run away from that thought. You just stay with it. You, have, <laughs> thank you. you brought forward a concept which is absolutely real, true, that when we accept, I'm scared. That's the first place to say, I'm scared. Fear of unknown is a very, very natural thing to happen for all of us. The fear of unknown, fear of failure, fear of rejection, you know, you can just keep on putting them on, adding, 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 adding. It can be in many, many forms and shapes, depending on the situation, interpretation, scenario, all of it. But the minute you say, I'm scared, really, as you said, the potency of that reduces because you've stopped living in denial. And the cycle of moving from grief to denial to anger has started shifting towards acceptance, solutioning, and then action. So the minute you accept, and I had a very interesting experience once. I was uh, going for a self-transformation course and I reached late there. And uh, it so happened that I lost some uh, precious jewelry. So but of course, I was really upset as to I couldn't find it. And when I reached there, uh, the first thing they told me was, 
Ashu, you just take a pause. We accept. We understand you lost the jewelry. First, just say you are upset. I said okay, and I said yeah, I am upset, and more than upset at losing the jewelry, I'm angry with myself for not for being careless. I think the you know really going back to the minute I said I'm upset and I'm angry with myself I realized that half the emotion gets trapped in the judgment and the fear and the upset and it's only then when I said all that was I able to actually sit and attend the course and I had never experienced or realized the power of that acceptance of an emotion emotions are our biggest biggest powerhouse they are our weakness and they are our powerhouse how we use them is really up to us and our emotions are actually what alert us to the existence of life within all times i feel hot i feel sad i feel happy i sense something all these feeling sensations are a sign of a liveness so an uncertainty when it comes and you suddenly feel that sensations it's a sign of a liveness i'm still alive and how privileged are we to experience the aliveness now it's about really converting that aliveness into an opportunity into a possibility into exploring into so many conversations have happened here and i'd like to say uh, take a pause here and say what are there some questions that are emerging now for people through so many so many stories and conversations that we've had i'm going to go complete not a question but mm -hmm. a statement what is this aliveness doing to my authentic self i think it's giving me an opportunity we were to feel back to get in touch whatever comes my way that is the possibility sorry what never comes my way then I and if you are authentic to yourself then you can live life more easily more effortlessly then nothing else comes in the way thank you for that pari thank you so much so whether it's observations or questions ajit kulkarni where do we go from here where do you want to go so can i pitch in ashu yeah sure who's that uh, i am anuradha hi anu hi so uh, i guess uh, as i was listening to every one of you i think the thought which came to my mind was that yes there is uncertainty yes we don't know what's uh, coming tomorrow and how things are going to pan out but i think personally for me this has given me a great amount of time for a pause and that pause has allowed me to see through or filter through a lot of things which could be bucketed into what's in my control and what's not in my control now what's happening outside and the covid and everything that's happening pretty much not in my control so what's this allowed me to actually filter out some of those and say okay what's in my control and given whatever there is so there is this acceptance of the situation an understanding of what's in my control and then try and doing something about it rather than sitting and uh, you know feeling sorry about everything else thank you anu so yes a pause helps us yet again anchor into possibilities of life who else any questions and you can ask questions from each other also i'm not the only resource here we have 40 other resources would somebody like to use this platform to ask an open question 
I'll, I'll speak up. Um, All right. I see, I, see, I see on the chats there there's people saying, where do we go from here? I uh, saw that and good, I right? was waiting for somebody else to pick it up. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to say, will you continue on your journey? What, what's stopping you? What's, why are we turning different paths or different, different journeys or different paths unless this particular scenario in our life at the moment is the turning point in our life? I've had, I've had my turning point years ago, so I'm still continuing my path. It's just a minor roadblock. It depends on where you're heading at the moment. If you're confident on your path, on your purpose, your journey, you just continue. It's a roadblock. If this is the jolt that you need to turn, change direction, then you change that direction. But it's not an automatic change direction. It's just a road, it's just a, it's a road bump, right? And that's all it is, speed bump. Unless it's, it, this is the time when you need to change. So thanks for that, Ross. So here is where I'm going to introduce the concept of free will. We are all gifted with the free will to choose how to think, how to be, where to go, what to do, how to act. And it's really up to us. So where you go from here is a choice given to each one of us. In fact, this moment is a choice. Choosing to be here is also an act of free will. So every moment offers us a choice. And what we do with that moment, with that thought. So, you know, there are just so many thoughts that cross our head. Which one do I want to, as an observer, pick or let go? Is up to me. Do I want to really, there's an emotion you experience. Do I, do I want to keep enjoying that experience or do I want to shift the experience? That's a choice again, which we have. So free will is really the biggest gift given to us in every moment. And how do you navigate through uncertainties or through any phase of life? really depends on one, our interpretation of that phase. Two, from that interpretation of that phase, what are the possibilities or explorations we create for ourselves? And three, what actions we take from that. So it's, re and even non-action is an action. So it's a choice where we can define it, whether I want to upskill myself, I want to learn, I, you want to really collaborate with somebody, you want to experience life to the fullest, you want to connect with family and relationships more of. There are so many opportunities that life offers. It's all up to us. Now, recognizing that fear, you know, an uncertainty of, I can't plan ahead is a very significant part of an uncertainty where suddenly all plans go up in the air. That's when agility comes into play. You make a plan in the short term or you make a plan and you say, how can I keep adapting as the situation evolves? Now, this is possible when one is able to really observe life from a more detached space and keep on adapting so it's, you know, you keep adapting as the situation demands rather than how you wish it to be. If wishes were horses, we would all be elsewhere. So it's really like, I would love to be at Caribbean Ashok for that matter. But right now I am in my house in Mumbai with little choice, but to be here for a much longer time. And really, like you said, Vasudev, emotions are energy in motion. So we... It's, play, it's staying in tune with that dynamism, that rhythm. Now, to stay in tune with it, you have to be aware. Aware, alert to it. There is no other way. It's a discipline, everyday discipline. It's an every moment discipline. doesn't just happen. It's an effort. How do I self-trigger to acknowledge my emotion or feeling? How do you self-trigger? Vani, 
Thank you for that question. Would somebody like to answer that for her? Okay, let me ask you differently. Would you like to acknowledge yourself just now? How about giving you the space here to acknowledge yourself? Yeah, when, when there is a question, when there is an ask, it, it triggers uh, for the acceptance. But how do I uh, do it from my inner self? That's what I'm more concerned about because beating around the bush when there is an uncertain situation mm. and then taking time to come out of it or just to accept to that specific feeling. It, how do I self-trigger rather than just sitting there and beating around the bush about that situation? Okay. How do you, what is your best muscle memory or what, how do you develop a muscle for yourself or in your memory? What is your best way of doing it? Keep repeating it, practicing it. Would that help? <laughs> and how do you keep a reminder for yourself? Yeah, it, it's more uh, on what I have to achieve. So that keeps Okay, so you create me. reminders for what you have to achieve. Would you like to create a reminder for acknowledging yourself? Absolutely. To develop, yeah. to develop a new muscle memory. Right. So in this moment, if you had to say, I, like, I would love to acknowledge you for being brave for that matter, really, really being courageous to say, how do I do this? What is the acknowledgement you can give yourself? Feeling lighter. Wow. Okay. And when you feel lighter, what happens next? What do you experience in yourself? A very calm. I mean, I just see, uh, I mean, that's how I usually visualize. For me, it, it's more about uh, a sea which is very calm with a complete moon, a full moon there. So that's how I feel whenever I feel lighter. Okay, so if visual works for you, mm -hmm. would you like to create a visual to trigger yourself? Sure, I think that that's actually giving me a lot of ideas. I think I should try that. Okay. Excellent. So I look forward to seeing that uh, imagery sometime. Sure. I'll connect. I'll connect as soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Vani. Thank you for being uh, open here. Thank you and for really being open to exploring yourself. Thank you. Okay. We are eight minutes to the hour and I'm going to just open the floor for comments or anything else we have. Ashu, uh, one thought that I wanted to share was this is philosophical though, but sometimes in these uncertain times and like I'm locked up for the last 50 days all alone in Santa Cruz West. So uh, I think sometimes life philosophies and beliefs also are great and so, for example, the fundamental belief that whatever happens, happens for the best. There is a grand plan out there. You know, the very premise of uh, operating from hope, uh, being an eternal optimist. Some of those things have also come in very handy and very useful for me to stay, uh, to thrive rather than, you know, uh, mm -hmm worry too much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And may your you get more resilient as you go through this phase, uh, Puneet. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, LS, you wanted to come in. I, I just thought post-COVID uh, thought, uh, of course, I'm uh, always quite uh, optimistic that something really could uh, emerge just for the whole world. Just anyone can answer you know, that uh, every disruption has brought in some creativity, some invention, some good to the world. This is the first time the global actually crisis is happening across the countries. So anyone, you know, think that this will bring out something phenomenal change for the world? Uh, I would like to say something here. Uh, am I audible? 
yes you are we shall go yeah so what i have felt uh, over last uh, two months that there has been a very positive change on the environment the way the environment has been uh, cleaning uh, air is cleaner sky is cleaner you breathe good air so uh, what i have felt that people would realize this and probably after this uh, lockdown or the normal situation arrive even then people would tend to be more prudent towards the environment they would tend to do those act which will actually keep the environment clean and uh, in a better way than we have been in the past yeah that is very true so you know when we talk of post covid it's been a shifting target every time i thought post covid is okay april post covid is may now post covid is june i've decided to stop thinking what post covid means right now i'm just looking at during covid and life as is right now i think the post covid is a little bit of a <laughs> but yes if i had to share one observation i think is two two three things that i've seen very strongly is knowledge sharing has gone up phenomenally oh my god the world has suddenly opened up and said hey i exist let's share what i know and uh, because there it's an existential crisis of being invisible when you're inside uh, there's a humanness because everybody's struggling with the unknown uncontrollable no plans you don't know where life's headed the humanness is what we all seek what we all want to really connect with is that human in another and i think that's the best thing that's coming out of this is we are throwing aside or we are being forced to put aside those titles and those uh, various personas because you have little option but to be one amongst everybody right now because it's there is no aloneness in this whole uncertainty show me i ask something here uh, ashok here yes yeah. ashok have, uh, yeah so uh, the uh, compassion as i see within is rising yeah so uh, that sort of creates a balance and um, enables us to see more opportunity because we feel that uh, you know in in one sense uh there is justice there is a need to bring about justice there is a need to be uh, even to all and so on so these are all uh, coming up from a space of compassion and that is helpful very very true compassion is on the uprise and that is absolutely what humanity needs uh, um, the floor is yours ujjal thank you ashu thank you everyone i think uh, it happened yesterday also we had a group mentoring session by ashu and uh, everybody wanted uh, to have some more time but i think uh, uh, every good thing in life comes to an end but this is not an end this is just a pause before she comes and enlightens us once again at an opportune time but i would like to really thank you everyone for joining in now two things are remaining and uh, before but before i say that my personal take away from this session has been that perhaps to drive ourselves through the uncertainties uh, the answers and the reservoirs of power are lying within it's it's up to all of us to realize and seek help to realize that potential to drive through navigate through this crisis okay so so thank you for your expressions your insights and thank you ashu uh, for all the enlightenment and you facilitated that very well thank you so much and i would like to request everyone that we we are launching a feedback poll so you can just uh, uh, punch in your uh, uh, your responses and uh, also please come up on the video so that my friend pradeep can take a, take a snapshot for all of us and then now uh, we are ready to launch it on the social media and it's also going to be a great memory for all of us being together on this platform thank you so much ujjal and everybody for being here this has been an absolutely invigorating session because the participation is what makes it delightful and i really appreciate everybody's wholehearted participation here thank you so very much for that Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, Ash. Most welcome, Pradeep. Uh, let yeah. us know once uh, you are done with the. Sure. I'll just give the poll a minute more.
yeah. the faster the better and then we'll take a snap together okay okay so request everyone i mean just in case during that time if anybody wants to continue to interact with ashu uh, yes. you're most welcome we have some precious moments with her still left with us i should i want to say something <laughs> ashu if i may can i say something yes go ahead vasu <sighs> Ashu is frozen. I am not sure she is listening. Yeah, she is. She is there. She is there. I am here. I am here. So Ashu, one of the observations that I had is, I am a great fan of minimalism, and uh, a lot of people I know have realized what is the difference between their needs and their wants. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it is so starking that our needs are met quite simplistically. Yeah. It's the wants that are these huge things that are bearing us down, right? So, so a lot of my circle of friends and people I'm talking to are saying, I mean, this is a new thing, right? We are realizing that actually, for us to be comfortable, we don't have a huge budget necessary. Why, what are we now chasing there for, right? So that realization. is is becoming very prevalent and i hear a lot of people in my circle of friends and society talking more about it which i believe is a huge a contribution to the consciousness of our existence today thank you so much vasu for that and i'm going to challenge everybody with or leave everybody with one thought let's extend this concept of simplicity to even our thoughts it starts from there Absolutely. And let's keep our thoughts simple and our life beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ashu, for that. And uh, if everybody else has come on to their videos and put on their videos, should I go ahead and take a snap? Yes, Mujwal. Or coming in? Yeah, thirty six. Yes. Okay. I guess there are more coming in. Just a few more seconds. Okay, one, two, three, cheese. Just one more time. No light required. Ashu is smiling. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We are Thank done. Thank you so much, Vijayal. Thank you, Das. Most welcome. Thank you, everyone, and all of you have a wonderful evening ahead. And thank you, Ashu, once again. Great. Thank you. Here. Cheers. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. See you all next week. <laughs>